breaking news, defying the deadline to turn over Trump's taxes. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin tonight refusing to hand over President Trump's tax returns to the House Ways and Means Committee. Mnuchin telling the Democratic Committee Chairman Neal, quote, in reliance on the advice of the Department of Justice, I have determined that the committee's request lacks a legitimate legislative purpose and the department is therefore not authorized to disclose the requested returns. Out front now, Democratic Congressman and presidential candidate Eric Swalwell, and I appreciate your time. Good to have you with me. So Secretary Mnuchin's just come out with this news, uh, Congressman, saying uh, this is unprecedented, no way, not going to do it, it's illegal, there's no legitimate legislative purpose. Your reaction? Uh, good evening, uh, Aaron. It would actually be breaking news if Steve Mnuchin was turning over the tax returns uh, okay. because in this lawless White House, no one seems to follow the rules uh, anymore. It is troubling, though, that it appears that Attorney General Barr was involved in this decision if Mnuchin's advice was coming from the Department of Justice, which is all the more reason that we should move immediately to impeach the attorney general who has lied to Congress, missed his own subpoena deadline, and now is encouraging and is an accomplice to others uh, to not follow the law. All right, so I want to ask you about that impeachment because, um, it, first of all, obviously your committee, your committee is, is, is moving uh, to a vote, right, on holding attorney general Barr in contempt. So when it comes to Mnuchin, who is, as you point out, right, that's why I kept that preface in there to that sentence, in reliance on the advice of the Department of Justice, um, do you think Mnuchin should also be held in contempt? I think there have to be consequences, and I'm going to leave that to the chair for now. But I personally think, yes, that if you're not going to follow the law, it's time for people to start having consequences. For far too long, we've allowed this president and his underlings to continue to obstruct. And when we lose the rule of law in America, it's not just a concept. It's everything. It allows free markets, free ideas, and a freedom to dream. And we don't want to look like countries that don't have a rule of law. So, so let me ask you, because you, you say we need to move uh, now to hold, uh, to impeach uh, Attorney General Barr. Obviously, your committee, uh, Democrats on your committee, House Judiciary, are, are merely uh, trying to have a vote on Attorney General Bill Barr regarding contempt. Why, why do you think they're not willing to go as far as you are? Well, some members of the committee have already called for that. Veronica Escobar uh, from Texas has also called for impeachment of Attorney General Barr. I, I think that's where we ultimately end up. We got a letter today from the Department of Justice, which was frankly insulting, uh, which is showing that they're not going to cooperate with giving us the full Mueller report. We're not going to hear from Attorney General Barr, who didn't show up last week. And there's, you know, it, se it seems to be no acknowledgement that he lied to Congress a few weeks ago when he said he had never heard from Bob Mueller or any of the complaints that he had, when indeed mm -hmm. Bob Mueller had sent a letter to him. So you mentioned this insulting letter. I want to ask you, because Barr obviously says, you know, doesn't think he's being insulting. He's trying to work with your committee in good faith over a, an unredacted version of the Mueller report and what exactly that entails vis-a-vis -vis grand jury and other information. Um, he wants to meet with your committee on Wednesday, uh, his staff does with your staff, to resolve this dispute. Obviously, Wednesday's the day you're supposed to hold your, your vote on contempt. Are you willing to try to work with him in good faith, or is that just, it, it, this is all way too far? You're, you're done there. No, no, no. Absolutely. If he's going to give us, you know, the full report, then I think we could start to, to back off. I still yeah, think there have to be consequences for lying to Congress. Yeah, but he's clearly not saying he's going to give you the full report. He wants to negotiate with you. He's You're not saying give it's us all the full it's report. A whole full report or, or impeach. There's no middle ground for you? For me, yes. And, and also, again, I, I want people to understand why this is important. The, the report lays out 200 pages of links between the Trump campaign and the Russians, and there was never a sentence that said, by the way, these contacts stop. So if we're going to protect the country from future interference campaigns, we need to understand just exactly what Russia did. And we are not in the position to do that if the attorney general is going to protect the president and act as his lawyer and not as America's. So obviously you're running uh, for the Democratic nomination to face President Trump uh, in 2020. There's also that going on, yes. So, so, okay, yesterday the president tweeted, quote, despite the tremendous success that I've had as president, they have stolen two years of my, our presidency, collusion delusion, that we will never be able to get back. And this came after Congressman Trump had retweeted Jerry Falwell Jr. when uh, he said, I know, I now support reparations. Trump should have two years added to his first term as payback for time stolen by this corrupt fail coup. How seriously do you take this talk from President Trump, talking about people stealing years of his presidency, retweeting someone talking about a coup? 
I take it very seriously. Uh, one, it's, it's an insult to the African-American community uh, to even talk about reparations uh, in that manner. Uh, but second, again, this is what we are up against, a, re a president who does not respect the law at all, whether it's an oversight uh, function from Congress, uh, whether it's enforcing the law at the border and allowing refugees to come here and be processed, whether it's defending the right to have not be charged more for pre-existing conditions uh, on your health care. He doesn't respect it at all. The best thing we can do is to just absolutely show up, overwhelm the ballot box in 2020, and then make democratic reforms. And to your last panel, I'll just say this. Yeah. I've pledged as president on day one, I will get rid of that OLC opinion that says a president cannot be indicted, because clearly he feels like he's immune right now and able to do this. So you talk about an overwhelming victory at the ballot box, and the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi over the weekend talked to the New York Times. She said she's concerned that President Trump will not give up power voluntarily if he loses re-election by a slim margin, right? She's making that same point. It's got to be an overwhelming victory. Yeah. But, but what she said is she's concerned yeah. he won't give up power voluntarily. Is that any more responsible than Trump tw tweeting about a coup? That, but it, that relates to a president who, when he was a candidate, said that the election was going to be rigged, who during the midterm elections talked about illegal votes. After the election said that, you know, votes in California were coming from illegal sources. He has tried to set this up for a long time. And so you're in this position of like, do you, you know, voice your concern now before it actually happens? Or do you say it when it's too late and now he's refusing to leave office and insisting that he can stay for two more years? I think you have to do it now and take this guy at his word. Otherwise, we could all pay the price for it later.